Okay, welcome to the Swing Trading with Cycles channel. This is where we time the market without predicting the market. We use trend analysis to do that. We're going to look at uranium in this video. It is October 18th, so it's Tuesday night, and it's always important. I always mention this. It's important to see what happens on Tuesday because Monday is when the candle, when the excuse me, the weekly candle generally opens, and then Tuesday, price can only do th one of three things: it can consolidate. It can follow through on the move that happened on Monday, or it could you could see a reversal, right? And so on Tuesday, we'll start with the daily chart, and then we'll look at CCJ first. This was our Monday candle, October 18th, 17th, excuse me. And this was our Tuesday candle. This is continuation or um, basically um, that, that first option where the move continues, right? So you have follow through on the move, if you will. So this actually created a swing low, right? This candle on Monday, because we went above the high for this candle, which marks the low here. And we'll talk about what the numbers mean. We'll talk about the exact, or we'll talk about what the count might be. And today, actually, wow, Tuesday, we actually back tested it from above and then kept moving. That's a really powerful signal because generally, you know, like you know, general principle of technical analysis is that price tends to back test the breakout. So how do we think about this in terms of cycles? Now, as always, take a look at the links in the description for the cycles content, both written and video form. Now, I always say I say it in a lot of that material and I, I always reiterate price action comes first. The cycles just help us explain that better. And so important features of price action we have here, this enormous gap, right? <laughs> so we gapped up. This was August 23rd, August 24th. That was a Wednesday. We gapped up and we just kind of never looked back until we came back, tested the gap here, bounced. And then we're now, we now kind of tested the gap. And then the next day we kind of opened way below it. So the point there is that this is still an important kind of area, that area between 2470 and 2376. So wouldn't be surprised to see price react pretty strongly to that area, which is to say price getting pulled up to that area, let's say, could end in a lower high. In fact, I think that might be what ends up happening. And we'll see the, the weekly chart kind of give some clues as to that. You can see the 10 week moving average, which is what which is what this is is sloping down pretty aggressively but you know it's like the but price is also moving up at the same time so they're probably going to come and sort of meet each other now in terms of the way to think about this cycle count like again price action comes first so this count here at day 23 is saying is uh is means this cycle was 23 days long because the low was on day 23 and the high was on day 13 so this cycle was actually slightly right translated because we spent 13 days going up and we spent only 10 days going down, right? Because we had a low on day 23 and these are always trading days. This previous cycle was 35 days, very right translated, spent 26 days going up, had a high on day 26 and only nine days going down, right? So one way to think about this is instead of this being one cycle of 23 days, it could be that this whole thing is a cycle of call it 38 days. <clears throat> and, and the way you get 38 is very easy. This is count. This is a 15th day off of this low, right? So this like this is seven and you just count down. This is 15. So you just add these two numbers, right? If we if we pretended that we didn't count this low and we just said this is a low that's happening within this longer daily cycle, then that would still be a low on day 23. It just wouldn't be your daily cycle low. I mean, I guess in this case, it would be your half cycle low, potentially. This would be a bounce lower high and then a dump into an ice, a, a daily cycle low on day 38. Notice it doesn't even really matter, right? Whether it's day 38 or it's actually day 17 of a new cycle or excuse me, of a new cycle, right? Let's say that we this count stands. This was 23 days and now we're on day 17. Another way to look at it is maybe this was a tiny little short cycle at 15. It doesn't really matter because the price action is what matters, right? 
if we're going to make if we're going to have a short rally that ends in a lower high, then that's what's going to happen. And so you can end up seeing, like, the count can end up, you know, we can end up doing something like this, for instance, just to be clear, like a hypothetical. So maybe we even get all the way up to, like, here, and then we make a move lower, right? In that scenario, if you think about this, like, these few more days up, you could count them, call them day 18, 19, 20, and then you count this as a daily cycle low. Or you could say that, you know, this is a new daily cycle. So this is day one. This is day two. Then we have day three, day four, day five, day six, whatever it is. If, if you're finding, if you're catching my drift, this could end up being either a lower, uh, an early daily cycle high for a new cycle or just the continuation of a longer cycle decline. The point is you want to watch the price action for the Qs and then assign the numbers later. The numbers are not important. What's important is are we making higher highs and higher lows, or are we making lower lows and lower highs? Or are we doing something in between, which is you know the worst, where we're just kind of range bound. Right now, we have a swing low in place. Once we crossed above this low here, um, or I should say the high from this candle, which marks a low, again, that high, that's at $21. And then we got follow through, back us from above, and so that suggests we could keep running here. Again, you do want to be vigilant, head on a swivel for a lower high. But you would think we at least run to like 2376, the underside of this gap, maybe get into the gap itself. You know, I mean, you would imagine there's a world where we could run all the way to the upper side of this gap. And I'm, I'm talking about scenarios where we could keep running even if it becomes bearish and we end up kind of rolling over. And I'll show you the weekly chart is just not super promising. And <clears throat> this is an important sort of feature of price action. Because we got this really long, ugly red candle with no wick, or in very, very tiny wick, practically no wick, right? We now have an inside candle on the weekly. This is your weekly chart. We now have a, an inside candle on the weekly. And we would have to rally, and this is, the, this is the part that's so important to understand. We would have to rally all the way to $27 to make a new high on the weekly chart. I'll say that again. The high on this candle is $27. So we would need to get to above $27 to make a new high on the weekly chart. That's how you start to an uptrend on the weekly. Because right now, this, make no mistake about it, is a downtrend, right? We went down like that, then we came up. What is that? It's a lower high. Then we did this. So now we wanna be on guard for something like this, right? Again, the cycles don't really, the cycles are, are absolutely secondary. The way I would count this is we have our high on day 10. I'll get rid of this. We have, or excuse me, we have our high on, on week 10. This was week 11, 12, 13, 14. This big red candle is week 15. And so that's why even if this is a daily cycle low that we just marked, that, that swing low is an important low. We can't necessarily know for sure if it's a weekly cycle low because... We have a lot of wood to chop to get out of the range of this candle. That said, we could easily, we could add four more dollars, right? We can go from 2327 to let's say 2727. We could do that in, a, in four trading days. This is uranium and it's volatile, right? What would that, what would that percent increase be? Just as a hypothetical, yeah. So we're talking like 14, 15%. That's nothing in four trading days. So that's important to know about if, if price is going to really prove itself to you, as it were. It's also possible, again, as I told, as I mentioned that scenario, it looks like we want to sweep the $20 area. That was a really important level on the way up. So I wouldn't be surprised if we have some more work to do in that area. But you watch the, you watch the price action. At this point, you can, you, can, you can kind of set your levels. And this is where it might be interesting to do like a two-day chart or a three-day chart, right? So this is a three-day chart where each candle is three days. It doesn't work as well as something like crypto that trades 24/7, but you can see we have a nice little swing low on that time frame on that um, um, time frame as well, and this makes it a little bit less daunting. Again, that that's an important thing to understand. That huge red candle, that is the gap, right? And then some, like that huge gap down that we had on the daily, that's what created the ginormous weekly candle, and so. It wouldn't be crazy for price to just vacuum up 
through the gap. It doesn't mean that we are definitely going to do that, but that's what this sets up potentially. And again, this is your two-day chart. If I go back to the daily, again, that's why you have such a long red weekly candle because of that gap. And so if we go to the monthly, we are red now. That's important to know. We're also below last month's low. That's important. When you're below the low of the previous candle, a really easy way to think about it is it means any buy within that previous candle is now underwater by definition, right? Because if price, if the current price is lower, right, like we're right now at 23.27, the low from last month was 24.66. So that's the lowest price a person, like a purchase could have been made, right? 24.66. So if we're right here down at 23.27, it means those purchases are underwater. It means those market participants theoretically do have to make some decisions. They could certainly just hold and do nothing, but it's important. To, the longer we stay down here, the more pain it is for those people potentially. And again, you look at the monthly chart, that 20, you know, the twenty dollar area, not level by any means. Call it 19.50 to 20, which is obviously a pretty big range percentage wise, but. Looks like we want it, it. You could see a world where we want to kind of retest that, and even down like that. I remember that eighteen dollar level was really tough to get through on the upside. You could see a world where that becomes, you know, that becomes a kind of battleground, which is a decent amount of um, a decent decline from here. And bigger picture, I do. I, I said I keep saying we're in the three year cycle decline, although it doesn't have to mean a severe decline. We could see, we've already seen a pretty severe decline for like other risk assets, obviously. And so it doesn't mean we have to go much further lower, but it may mean that we need to correct more in time. And so that's CCJ, big picture. And this is all, this is true really for all of uranium. Um, and we'll look at the, we'll look at f the few of the ETFs. Um, so this is URNM. This is slightly, so, so CCJ is massively underperforming things, obviously some kind of fundamental catalyst. Um, so the URNM monthly candle is green and the weekly. So let's see, this is a very opposite picture. We actually have a swing low on the weekly. So, right, right. Like by making, or I should say we had a swing low on the weekly. That's important. Past tense. By getting above this cluster of candles at one point it did, I should say. It made all of this a swing low. I, that's kind of an advanced concept, but I hope you're seeing that, right? Like, I mean, it's really these two, you can call it. But like once we got above this kind of cluster, that was really positive news. But having come back through the range, and it's only Monday, so what that's setting up, and this is a daily candle, is a weekly candle that might go, yeah. So, so the weekly candle is still firmly green, for sure, but... This upper wick is definitely not what we want to see. Still a lot of trading days left, uh, so we could really easily course correct. But you can see a world where, and that, I'm sorry, that was your week, their daily chart. So daily daily swing low. So same idea as CCJ, except that's obviously you know under more pressure after the gap down. In this case, you can see this kind of cluster here, that 61 area. That's your kind of level that tells you, okay, we're going to go and test you know, potentially new lows, or we're going to retest this 54 area. That's URNM. Um, wow. Very similar kind of, you know, kind of a zone here, like URNM, URA this is, 1850, anywhere from like 1850 to like 8, 1765. That's obviously a huge range, but this is not promising by any means. I mean, it's the same pattern we're seeing everywhere. Three-year cycle decline, but it is important to note that some things may decline more than others. Some things may be in kind of worse shape than others. Uh, interestingly enough, this is much closer to its 200-week moving average than CCJ, for instance. Um, we'll look at energy fuels. That's usually a popular one. This is your weekly chart trying to make a weekly swing low, which would kind of make this a weekly swing low. This would potentially make this like week three. That would be really interesting. What's the monthly look like on this one? So still green, but just an inside month would really need to get above about 821, which is obviously a long ways from up from here. So you want to use those lower time frame signals. And finally, DNN. So look at the weekly. Um, this one is hovering ominously close to its 200 week moving average. That's not necessarily great. Well, this was a cycle count, so I, I haven't really updated. Let's just see. 
what would that be? So if we call that a cycle, and then we call this, right, so we may actually still be declining into some kind of weekly cycle low, which is probably true of CCJ, which we just looked at, right, that big red candle, maybe setting up for more downside, something like a 17, like a week 17, 18, maybe even week 20 um, ICL. So that's kind of the general picture for Uranium. I'm not going to look at all of these names. I want to keep this video. I don't want to make this video too long. Definitely a, a, a short-term setup, especially for CCJ for upside with very clear levels. But I'd say overall, keep in mind the big picture three-year cycle decline. That's true of pretty much or almost all risk assets. So it's not like it's unique to Uranium by any means. Um, but there's going to be a huge opportunity on the other side of this. I, I just, I'm I'm preaching patience, keep some powder dry, be ready to buy that big swing low, that really important one where we can see, we see a sustained move, right? Where you're going to see months of upside and not have to kind of worry about the day-to-day, -day, even week-to-week. So that's the lay of the land for uranium. Thanks for watching.